and you're here, always following my white rabbit. And you know what? That's my hundredth video on this channel. So crazy! <laughs> But uh, we were not supposed to talk about uh, what I could have. Let's be a bit serious. Oh. Work for your luck! <laughs> Today I want to talk about this kind of great effects that make watercolor really be special and be different than other mediums. Some people sometimes talk about happy accidents uh, to try to evoke this kind of uh, watery nice effects, but for me there are no happy accidents and I am going to tell you how to get them. With this kind of happy accident uh, trendy expression, you kind of assume that uh, you are painting and maybe at some point if you are lucky, watercolor is going to reward you and to offer you the gift of a nice watery effect. <laughs> Mm, I am not so much into this mindset because I don't really believe in chance, in luck. I rather believe that it's how often and how well you create a suitable condition for work to happen that is decisive and makes the difference. So what I just said is more kind of a personal growth statement and maybe one day I will uh, create a creative mindset video series, who would like it? But applied to watercolor, it means that they are not really happy accidents, but only you creating some condition suitable for lovely things to happen on the paper. The moral is a bit, work for your luck! <laughs> and I am going to tell you in the following of this video how you can work for it, of course. You. watercolor has this kind of own special way to be a bit unpredictable and that it's what makes it uh, special. But this doesn't mean of course that what happened on the paper is only luck. This just means that sometimes what you thought would happen on the paper don't and that sometimes something you didn't predict just happened on the paper. But this doesn't mean that you can't control a bit of the effect and that you shouldn't try to because you know you have two choices. The first choice is just waiting for happy accident, uh, how uh, people say let uh, the watercolor do the work and so that's a bit kind of uh, waiting for luck and being kind of a passive in your painting process. This first option would also mean that you work hard to depict a subject and to try to get a kind of a descriptive thing but that's the most interesting and important aspect. You know the painterly rendering kind of abstract way of working with the colors and waters and effects like splattering lies everything Thing, you would kind of delegate it to watercolor itself so you wouldn't work for the most interesting and fascinating thing. The interesting aspect of your work would appear a bit uh, randomly. What a frustrating approach. But you have another choice and this choice is trying to understand the best you can how watercolor works, how water interacts with pigments so that you can create, as I said earlier, the conditions so that a nice uh, gorgeous painterly effect can appear in your work and not by my but because you worked for it. You might not always get what you planned, what you expect. Watercolor will always have this kind of part of a mystery, but at least you are active and aware during the process. So now that I encourage you to work for it, I guess I should share with you the two secrets that will change everything in your watercolor and will make them more watery, more watercolory, <laughs> more watercolored. <laughs> We should invent a world. Please tell me which world would be the best. You know, painterly, but with the watercolor root. Anyway, third thing you should do to get the most of your medium of the watercolor is using more water and more pigment. I don't know, maybe this can seem random, but it's really, really, really important. By using more water, you are going to keep your watercolor alive. You want the water to flow on the paper. You don't want it stiff and dead. Maybe you noticed when you use too few water or maybe a brush that is not uh, juicy enough and doesn't allow you to get uh, enough water, it looks a bit like marker, you know, just a kind of a flat, plain, boring, pale color surface. So if you think you have sometimes uh, this uh, marker, 
effect on your work, please use more water and make it flow. So the first secret is keep it alive with water. But if you use a lot of water and not so much pigment, you are going to end up with a pale wishy-washy watercolor. That's why it's important to use a lot of water and a lot of uh, pigment so that you can get at the same time strong colors and nice watercolor personality for your work. So, more water and more pigment! Do you get it? Aha! That will be wonderful! Yay! The other secret may be slightly more difficult to express. It's about using really different concentration of water and pigment. For example, using really really strong pigment at some point and using just pure water just aside. And this point is a bit the reason why I wanted to make this video because even for me, I think this is something I really want to think about more and that can really help me to improve my technique even more. You don't want to use, you know, always kind of same dilution for your watercolor and especially on the same stage because maybe you are going to tell me, oh, but yet yeah, I use the pale diluted watercolor on the first layer and then I use a thicker one, you know, to have stronger value. And I get it, but what I am talking about is a bit different. It's about using different concentration of pigment at the same time, at the same stage. It's about putting strong pigment and then water just aside so that pure pigment can flow in the water and that the water can creep in the pigment. This thing about uh, dropping pure pigment wet in wet in the water is a bit this same approach too because that way you make on counter once again pure water and pure pigment. It's physics. If you use two different concentration like that, it's going to have something happening in the middle. That's a bit like, uh, you know, oil and water can't mix together. So if you put them together, it's going to create bubbles and things interesting. Luckily, water and pigment are meant to mix uh, together, of course, so that's not the same. But that's a bit to say that if you put together this kind of strong pigment, which is not a liquid, it's kind of, you know, grounded powder, grounded rocks with pure water, they're going to create a bit the same way, really special things. So be bold, use clear water aside with a strong pigment to create the most gorgeous effect ever! And your watercolor will rock! And that's because we use this kind of uh, organic essence of our materials, the pigments and the water, that we can get and create this fascinating kind of seaweeds, shapes, leather-like texture, feathering edges. I think that's uh, pretty fascinating how this kind of look with growing things on your painting, sometimes even like moisture, if you play a bit too much with it. So remember, there are no happy accidents, this is all what you create on the paper with your paint with the water. Always try your best to create the condition so that something can happen. Make it flow, make it exciting, make it bold, give life to your painting. Be cheerful. Thank you so much for watching my little cute adorable bunnies. See you on Friday and remember, join the creative side of the fall. Stay tuned for the next hundreds and even thousands of videos, my cute adorable creative buddies, bunnies.